Hi, I'm Drew, Application Engineer with Megger. In this video, we'll be covering the operation of the Baker PPX30A Power Pack with the Baker DX host unit. The Baker DX host unit is connected in the back of the Power Pack with a umbilical communications cable and is powered from the uh, convenient outlet power outlet on the side of the PPX30A. To begin the step voltage high pot test, we need to select the Megom DC test icon. And then we need to select the proper test configuration. In this case, we'll select the host uh, DX with power pack icon. So now we want to take the function selector switch to the, um, the DC high pot selection of either 100, 10, or 1 microamp per division. And to start the testing, we'll start with the 100 microamp per division setting. And now we'll take the test lead selector switch from the ground position to the high pot position. And that will connect all three high voltage leads to the high voltage power supply. And now we're ready to proceed with the step voltage high pot test. Okay, so to do that, we'll either press the push to test button and hold, or to press the foot switch. I'm gonna use the foot switch, start the test. You see the Lee's energized light, or I'm sorry, the Lee's energized um, indicator there, and then we also see the Lee's Energize light illuminated here. Okay, and now we want to ramp the voltage using the voltage control knob. We're going to turn that clockwise, and we'll watch the voltage increase. And we'll want ramp that to our first uh, step, which in this case is going to be 2500 volts. Also see the LEDs indicate uh, that our voltage is increasing as well. Okay, now we're at 2,500 volts. I'll stop ramping. I want to press the step button. Okay, and that's going to say step test started, and we'll have a countdown timer from 60 seconds um, for that particular test. Now, if we had elected to do the Megom PI, uh, we could have done that first. Um, for that uh, Megom or PI operation, I would refer you back to the DX operational video um, for, the, for, those, uh, for those features. So we want to take the uh, function selector switch now. We're at the 100 microamp per division, but because our current is so low, we want to go ahead and scale down so we can see that current, have a little bit better resolution for the current level that we're monitoring. We have very low current right now. Okay. Now once the step time goes down to zero, it's going to say step test complete. And we're going to make sure we take this function selector switch back to the 100 microamp per division setting because these, these positions actually define the trip level of current. And while we're ramping, the voltage will be, uh, I'm sorry, the current level will be much higher uh, during the ramping cycles. So it says step test complete, take the function selector switch to the 100 microamp per division setting. And we'll use the voltage control knob to ramp to the next step, which will be 5,000. Okay, now we're at 5,000. I want to hit the step button again. Again, that tells the tester that we're at a new, st new step and we need a new timer. And you'll see that timer appear there on the right again. Okay. Now to monitor the current, we're going to take that microamp per division setting and we're going to lower it to the lower range as long as our current is, is low to ensure that we're, again, in the most accurate range for measuring the current. All right, our second step is complete. We'll take that function control switch back to 100 and then ramp the voltage to our next step, which will be 7,500. Okay, now we've achieved 7,500 volts. 
hit the step voltage or step button again. There we go. And we get um, a new step timer. And then I'm gonna take the function control knob again, reduce it, make sure the current's lower, low enough to go to the next range. So you get the most, again, most accurate reading of leakage current. Okay, our third step is now complete. We're ready to ramp to our final step. Remember to take your function control knob back to 100 microamps per division. Ramp a voltage to the final step, which in this case, again, is 10,000 volts. Okay, so we get to 10,000 volts. And now instead of step, I wanna select DC high pot. And this will mark the final step as the, the high pot value. Um, and it'll calculate the final resistance and, 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 and mark it in the data properly. Okay, we get, we get a timer exactly the same way we did, we did for the steps. And when that timer says that the DC high pot test is complete, we'll be done with the DC high pot. Yep, and we still want to remember to reduce the microamps per division setting to the appropriate level for the current that we're monitoring. Okay, DC high pot test complete. We can take our foot off the test switch and we're gonna take the test lead selector switch to the ground um, position on the, take the test lead selector switch to ground and that'll ensure we have a path for the windings to discharge to ground. Now you wanna make sure you allow that winding enough time to discharge. We usually say as much time as the DC voltage was applied to the winding is sufficient to get to remove the charge from the coils under test. Now, remember that we want to save that data, so we want to click the save icon, and then if, um, of course, if we select the proper, proper folder, if you don't have a folder, create one. And then again, select the proper record. If you don't have a record, create one. Again, if, for more detailed explanation on creating folders and records, I'll refer you back to the DX operational video. Once the data's uh, saved, uh, we're all done. We're ready to move on to additional testing.